Good evening, and welcome to Key Radio Live, where it is almost summer. Finally. Oh for God, people who are time? in school. <laughs> Everyone else probably doesn't care. What is happening to time? <laughs> how, long, how long have we been around? We're like a year and a half now. It's, it's good stuff. Anyway, so yeah, Key Radio Live is doing some summer hype episodes. We'll go through a few summer key works, and I'm going to bring different people on for each one. Tonight, I'm joined by returning co-host Manpig and newcomer Shiawase Spiral. Welcome, welcome to both of you. Hello. What a season. I like summer. Utori, our fearless leader, says that it's the worst season, and... No. <laughs> I... I kind of agree. I'm sorry. <laughs> like... I I, don't I, know, I, but... I understand why people dislike summer, but um, I, I come from Hong Kong where it's hot all the time, anyways. And, and summer like, and I are hot, from Florida, nice. where summer is the where is objectively the worst season here. So, yeah, I live in like the northern part of the country, and even I think summer's too hot. Because <laughs> <laughs> like I I look at I I live in Hong I lived in Hong Kong, and summer was like it, it's it was always hot in Hong Kong unless it's winter. And summer is like the only time it was hot and the sky looked good. Like it's like blue and everything was vivid and vibrant. And I just have my best memories in summer. Like I, I spend most of my time in my room under air conditioning anyway. So, so temperature it works. Really matter. It works in your particular case, which is <laughs> which is nice. You know, I can yeah. I could get behind that if it if I weren't the type to always be out running, you know what I'm it's, saying? It's the South, it's the South either Eastern life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, going through, uh, and like, this is actually a good transition in a way because Yukito also does not like summer. <laughs> like, okay, we're, we're talking about air today and, and, the first thing that happens in air, basically, he gets off the bus and he's just like, fuck, it's hot. I mean, yeah, if he's in a black t-shirt, I'm pretty sure. So, like, that does not surprise me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Utori said, so does Hyrie. It's true, but <laughs> it's not the same kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. The, the next few episodes of Key Radio Live will be going through the summer works. Today we'll talk about air. Next week we'll take off because it's Mother's Day in America. And then after that we'll do an episode on Kamisama Ninatahi. And I can't have an episode on that without bringing on Platy because they are like one of the... They put so much deep thought into this review. It's like top 10 anime reviews, just saying. Um, so... So that will be two weeks from today. After that, Hammy and I will have a big old debate about Tomoyo after. And, <laughs> and then it's time for loopers. And Keyverse will be having, in about a month, a loopers book club. So I'll talk a little bit more about what's going on with that at the end of the episode. And that's it. <laughs> Also, called what you should mention, that kind of summer is, is summer in Hong Kong, at least in my experience. So, Which kind every, of summer? The air kind summer, of summer? Summer, po summer pockets. Like, oh, summer pockets. Sunny, we're skipping summer pockets, out. by the way, because Reflection Blue is a thing that might yeah. or might not be coming soon. We'll talk about that if that gets confirmed. It, well, it's confirmed to exist. It's just... Confirmed to release when. soon. Yeah. yeah, that I don't know. So... Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, it would it would just be redundant to make two episodes based on summer pockets in a row. Yeah, um, yeah. Utori, there's gonna be like ten episodes on summer pockets in a row when when the book club happens. So that's because it's just a thing that's gonna happen when y'all are done. So y'all are doing the best work. Just saying over at Alka. Yeah, I noticed that it said 60% uh, completion for Sumugi Route, so... And are. isn't that the last one? Uh, I think so. I'm pretty so, sure it is. Yeah. Uh, Platy says, I want to talk about Shizuku. Same! Like... Oh, boy. All right, so 
we're talking about air today, like to, to finally bring it back to the actual topic. And the thing is, we I just want to give a quick disclaimer here. We will be covering spoilers up through the end of summer route. So and maybe a little bit into air route, but we won't talk about the ending. Um, there are plenty of people who consider a certain tone shift for summer route to be a spoiler. We are going to talk about that. So if you've not seen the anime or read the visual novel, you will be spoiled today. Um, so yeah, don't do that to yourself um, with air. But if you've only seen the anime, this should be plenty safe for you. About air, we breathe it. We we well, need it to live. Spoiler: Hijiri is scary. I love Hijiri. <laughs> like Hijiri is one of the better characters in the air, honestly. All right. Well, speaking of the characters, who's y'all's favorites? Uh, me, Suzu, or uh, Haruko. Like, I'm the ba I'm the basic one. <laughs> I have um, very I basic taste. I don't think it's basic to say me, Suzu. I think that me, Suzu is a fantastically written character. I uh, I think she's probably the best written. I would say best written key character, period. Maybe that's a bit of a, like, I don't know how much of a claim that is, but It's a bold claim, but I'll support it. Like... I don't think people can really judge that. I, like, she has yeah. a pretty popular fan base with people who's actually read air. Right. Yeah. Utori is screaming Kano in the chat, and I want to make a point to mention that because Kano does not get enough love. Okay, she's... I, I wouldn't put her in my top of air characters, but she gets a lot of really undeserved hate. Like I don't really understand Kano like as in a hate sense. I just think they didn't bring out her full potential, if that makes sense. Sure. I can get behind that. Yeah, I, I think it, even it. after reading Kano route, I don't have a very clear idea of what kind of person she is. Which seems like a problem. I, I feel like I know Kano as a character, I just don't think they did much with her. And that's a different issue. And it's really weird, because I don't know if you people knew this, but uh, Kano's route was literally written by one person who joined the company for Air, and then they left the company before Air was completed. And literally their only mark on history was writing Kano's route and just, just disappearing. Yeah, it's it's a real shame. And it's not even just for Key. Like, if you go on VNDB, it's the only thing they have. Which is yeah, pretty much. Yeah. just mm -hmm. kind of unusual. And we're talking about this person. I can't even remember their name. I'm looking they, it up at the moment. There are a lot of names. Hang on. Yeah. This is the person who shares the name with a sumo wrestler. Oh, is Ishikawa. it really? Ishikawa. That's his name. Ishikawa Takashi. Did not know that. Dude, dude just like he came into existence, wrote the Kano route, and just left. He disappeared does not elaborate but me. he shares his name with a sumo wrestler we i can't move on from this this is news <laughs> to me <laughs> yes viral no no this is a thing tell me I, more I, it's like hard to find information about this person because all you find in your search results is the sumo wrestler that's amazing <laughs> what if they are the same person like that would be pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, because Saito said it. There's a sumo wrestling thing that happens in the... <gasps> Did we just that discover is... something crazy? That is I, 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 I doubt it, because... I doubt it, too, but it'd Ishi be really Ishi funny. Ishikawa Takashi doesn't sound like a very uncommon Japanese name. No, it, it sounds quite common. It's not like John <laughs> Smith, but, you know, it's up there. <laughs> That's... Yeah, pretty much, but, uh... So, how, how are we going to talk about the characters? Are we going to go through them root by root and talk about... We're already character? kind of on Kano route, let's just get right into that one. Alright, like... so, I think we should obviously talk about the most important character in all of Air. So, Potato. <laughs> God yeah. himself. God himself. As they say. Uh, I have I have propagated this this knowledge that Potato is actually the form of God who has come descended to Earth and has come to witness our actions as God as dog is an anagram for God and since we can't identify the kind of dog that Potato is it's only it only makes sense to come to this conclusion 
I uh, potato is, am is... in full support of this. <laughs> potato is just he he is seeing the machinations of humanity through the through the eyes of it, of this avatar, this fluffy little avatar. He is also the subject of my favorite Furbus fan art. <laughs> Shout outs to Furbus. <laughs> Pico Pico. Funny. Oh yeah, he also made a meme of me saying Pico Pico once upon a time. That noise so... is not a good noise. And you can <laughs> totally disagree with me, but I heard more Picos than I ever needed to hear when I played air. That's what I, I remember you saying this once, that you are not a potato fan, which is probably going to be the biggest hot take any of the three of us are going to share today. Well, I feel I'm like just going to throw it out there. <laughs> Honestly, it's one of the few imperfections in a near-perfect visual novel. <laughs> None of you can see it, but I'm shaking my head. Apologies to Kud, but I think that Misuzu is actually like the most puppy-like character in all of Key. The way that she just kind of keeps like wanting to play with and tails Yukito around and he pushes her away, but she keeps coming back like a little sad puppy. Oh, that's so cute. I can't even. That and it true. kind of makes sense in a way, like that she's... You know, she already is childish. Like, her Japanese, the way she speaks is just simpler than the other girls. I know because I can understand her better than the other girls. So. She's funny and cute. It, it makes sense. But yeah, Kano, Kano's route, okay, this is probably the most contentious route in air because a lot of people just don't really understand what's happening. The entire plot is basically relegated to this flashback scene that we see with the um with the yeah. mother in the past the mother and the mother and her child yeah which i yeah and i'm i'm one of those people who actually still doesn't get it <laughs> so if, if anyone's gonna explain that to me it's, it's gonna be you guys because I, I i don't understand it. i don't get it <laughs> here's the Please. way i interpreted it is that that family is a victim of the curse, basically. Mm. Is just a future victim of the curse after Kana and, um, and, uh, That's yeah. That's and Ryuya, right. right. So they're one of the many families that were affected by the curse. Right, right. because we, we know that that particular flashback happens after, um, after summer route because the monks had already destroyed the village at that point and this family is on the run okay All so right. we i i it's not super definitive but i think it's enough information to say that the kano route flashback happens after summer route right and here's so. my question is that uh i don't have anything against this backstory but it feels unrelated to kano please please like inform me if i if you ha disagree with that because i'm very interested here but i feel like this kind of plotline comes out really left field for the kano route and only gives an excuse for having kano wanting to choke yukito <laughs> like that, that's honestly what it feels like because i can't think of how it would directly fit into the story at hand if that makes sense it fits the theme it does not fit the plot super well I, but I do think it fits the theme of forgiveness. Because that's really what this route is about, ultimately. See, the problem is that Lucia just explained it like more coherently in the past three sentences than the actual route does in-game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's, it's like, Kano's route is sort of a... It, it's, it's weird for me, because it has all this stuff that would be good on paper, right? Like, Kano gets possessed, that's cool. The backstory about the mother and her child, and... What mother would do that to her child? That's cool. And the, you know, the toxic feather and like, uh, are, am I glad I was born? Like, it's all good ingredients, but it's not combined in a way that hangs together. It's sort it of doesn't like string them together super well. And I do think that is a, a fault of the writing. Like, it's, an, it's like uh, making a good meal out of like some good ingredients. You can buy some great ingredients, but unless you have the skill to bring them together and make a good dish, you're just going to end up with a mess. Trust me, I know from experience, I can't cook, so that's ba <laughs> basically the same thing here. And that's what Kano's route does feel like to me, it's like, I don't want to be mean to it, because I do really like a lot of the characters, and I, and I was overall entertained by it, but 
I don't know, it felt very disconnected to me. And at times, like, I felt just confused. I didn't really get it. Yeah. yeah. And the heroine does not carry it for a lot I, of I people. Like, I am, uh, I am a big fan of Kano, but I'll, not everyone I'll is. I will repeat something that I said Go ahead. In, the, uh, in the Air Channel a couple days ago, which is, what if Hijiri had been the main focus of this Had been the heroine of the route. Side character? What do you all think of that? I don't know, because the thing is, I... I think Hijiri feels like more of a heroine, but at the same time, her type of character doesn't really lend itself as well. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I mean, it's leaving me very conflicted. Because they make Hijiri out to be more, more of the main character. But at the same time, it's Kano who we end up spending more of in the common route. So. I think. I, I'm kind of on the same page as you, Man Pig, but I think I think the biggest issue with making Hijuri the heroine of the route is that there's no opportunity for romantic chemistry with her and Yukito. Because yeah. the entire point of her relationship with Yukito is that she doesn't trust him. And it's part of her growth in the route that she eventually comes to trust him with Kano. Uh -huh. So... Yeah. I don't know. There's a number of I issues with making her the heroine. I, I ha I'm very conflicted because on the one hand, I feel like Kano being the one who's possessed and stuff is more natural as like a heroine thing. But the, at the same time, I feel like the, the other issue is that we don't focus as much on Kano after that. Because we spend the most time with her in the common route. But then once once the route starts, we right. spend more time talking talking to Hijiri about the issues because she knows more while Kano's just in Narnia while her body is trying to choke us. So Yeah. 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 I never thought of it that way, but you're absolutely right. The other Sorry thing is that Hijiri has just this this big personality um, who kind of steals the scene when she's in it. And she has a pretty compelling story about how she you know, like puts herself through medical training or whatever she does. And right. she's wearing the family by herself. She's like, she's like a compelling character. Yeah, absolutely. And Kano, the, I mean, part of the whole point to her is that she doesn't really know who she is because she kind of can't move on from this whole thing with her mother. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I actually speaking about the mother, I do wish we focused more on that more because honestly, I completely forgot it was a plot point until the ending. Because they right. barely and it's kind it. of the whole point of the route. It's it's the entire point of Kano, I'd say, like as her yeah. character, is that she needs to move on and like be accept her life in the now instead of wanting to be with her mother again. Right. Which I feel like is the main issue I have with the Kano route because they barely bring that to attention. And I feel like if they had focused on that instead, that would have made for a much better route, even with the problems like in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can definitely get behind that. That's that's personally my take. It's just I, I, love, I wish the writing love... was a little better and it would have made I mean the route is I still think the route is very unfairly just hated. Like people say it's the single bad part of air, and I don't think it's bad. I just think that the writing holds it back a little. Yeah, I think it's a lot of good ideas, but not the best execution. Sure. I would agree with all that. Yeah. Now, here's one big issue, and this is a nice segue, actually. One thing that I do think makes Kano Route a little easier to swallow, which most people don't do when they read Air, read it second. Everyone likes to say Kano Route first, and I don't think that's the best route order for Air. I'm a proponent of Minagi first. I can sort of get that because uh, Minagi relates the least to the girl in the sky because Kano at least has the feather. Right, and also yeah. Minagi route. Minagi route is a bigger emotional gut punch. Yes, because I feel like as much as everyone likes to rag on Michiru, she gets you. I like, her story gets you. <clears throat> like I actually fully agree with this because okay. okay. I am one of those people that, uh, as most people hated me true, the moment I met her, I was like, oh, God, this is 
This is a demon. <laughs> this is an annoying, annoying creature. As and Tori would her... say, she's a rat. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> she's a rat. <laughs> I can put myself in here and say that now. <laughs> she's a rat. Yeah, she's... but but uh. After after you get past the rat stuff, and once you get into like the actual story stuff, she's one of those characters that like like Makoto for me from like Kanon. Once I got into her story, I did a complete one eighty, and by the time I finished the route, I was sobbing. <laughs> I was like, "How did they do this again?" Yeah. No, I uh actually no. Wait, no. Okay, never mind. I was about to say I did Kanon before Air, but I didn't. That like. I I did that visual novel wise, I think. It's the anime that I, but my first consumption with air with the anime and I did right. do the air anime first. Now yeah, I will say got... Michiru is is a lot more annoying in the anime. She is uh, horrible. In my opinion, she's horrible in either medium. I actually hmm, I'm interested you said that because I read the VN first. And maybe it's just I did first too. Person, second exposure, but I read the VN first. And then I watched the anime, and I actually found her a lot more tolerable in the anime. But that's probably because they cut out so much of the slice of life that involved her. Interesting. Mm. Now, Maybe in the visual the novel, story. she never bothered me. I thought she was funny from the moment she was on screen, and I was laughing when I was supposed to laugh and crying when I was supposed to cry. I never found her annoying until the anime. <laughs> like, which I know is a hot take here i'm aware like i don't know if i call it a hot take i just like because the thing is most people think she's annoying neither medium but the anime it, she is definitely obnoxious but that's just the nature of anime i guess yeah probably thanks platy <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah uh, I don't know if this is the common opinion, but I've also seen a lot of mixed feelings when it comes to the Minagi route. My, like, from what I've seen, at least, in the fandom, the main criticism is from people is that it's too long. And I've heard from some people that it and it feels like it ends three times, which I, I'm, I don't get it. I don't it's get it myself. It's long and filled with a lot of crap. The thing <laughs> is, I didn't really notice that, personally. It is, it is my least favorite route in air, but least favorite by default. It's still like a 9 out of 10 for me. I didn't I didn't dislike it at all. Like, it's personally mm -hmm. my favorite of... Of the heroin routes? I really wanted to like it. I like the overall premise. I love Minagi. Um, she's like an S-tier key heroin for me. Um, she's actually, my really sweet. She's Fucking yeah, gorgeous my, too. Her art is fantastic. Um, yes. My current nickname in the server is sunbathing with a moon and stars because that is what she tells you she is first doing. When you at night. <laughs> but I, I just that's picked that's up on that. That's amazing. <laughs> well, it's great once you figure out what she means by it. Right. Yeah. But the route itself is. It is, I'm sorry, it is too long and it just needs some good old fashioned editing. There are too many repeated scenes. There is too much questionably written slice of life. And above all, there are too many fake out endings. Now, I, fake out endings, what do we actually mean by that? Because there's a certain bad end that I do think is very important to the route's message. Because the thing, the thing is, uh... I never got that criticism of fake out endings personally myself, because mm -hmm. like, I, like I've been hearing it a lot from a lot of fans. Like as I just said, that people say it ends three times. I don't understand that, because I, I personally thought it was one cohesive story, and I really liked it from beginning to end. Which yeah, I, was... I think I think it's it's well written. It's just there. It could use some trimming, like I don't know. Maybe I was just like used to long routes at the time, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally didn't have any pacing issues myself because I was about to say before I, I had a horrible coughing fit. Mm -hmm. um, I it's my personal favorite of the three character routes, and I personally enjoyed it a lot. Like I just enjoyed it the most, like from beginning to end. I just had a good time, and yeah. honestly, I just I really like Minagi's route. It's my favorite of the three character routes in terms of air because while I love Misuzu's route, it is 
very much a team player. You don't read Misuzu's route for Misuzu's route. <laughs> no, Misuzu's route is it's like it's a lead into the true route. Yeah, it's, it's basically a prologue, and it feels yeah. like one. And as good as a prologue it is, it, it's still a prologue. There's right. no satisfying release at the end. It's just oh, what's going to happen next? But Misuzu's Mis right. route is like a full story with an emotional climax and stuff. And I don't know. I I I loved it. I loved it a lot. Now, the here's the big thing to talk about with Minaki's route, because this is something that the mm. anime does not cover. And I think this is the reason that it's um, not, you know, loved so much in the anime is because I think the bad end is necessary to um, really understand what's happening. So maybe we should say something about the because the bad end you mean when they leave on the bus, right? Yeah, yeah. When when this, Minagi actually decides to go to leave town with Yukito, right? So this route's really interesting because it has a structure like almost nothing else that we see in Key, where it has two branches to this fork. That it's not just a quick bad end that you get over, um, and some of them are it's know, lengthy. Are it's yeah, each of the branches are like an at least an hour long. Well, the good end is like several hours beyond that but this is yeah. a whole other branch of the story and as far as i can see it's almost unique in that i i like that element i have a question which is which which do you think is better to read first first i think i, I, I that's just personally how i like to do things because if you're gonna read the bad ends which i don't always do but if you're gonna read the bad ends read them first because that makes the true end all the more satisfying at least in my opinion there are there are a few exceptions to that, I think, but not in air. In in the case of Minagi, I think reading the bad end first is the way way to go. And I think like in general, that's the way to go with air. Like I'm a proponent for actually reading the common route bad end, which some people call the departure end, where Yuki Toad leaves town without getting on any of the routes. And there's this beautiful, beautiful scene with Misuzu where they walk away from each other. If you read that ending, I think even that ending is important to Air's story. I couldn't agree more. That is such a beautiful ending. I yeah. haven't... I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> it's it's worth reading, Man Pig. It, cause it makes... To. It's... a contrast to what happens in Air Route. And Air Route is the one thing that we're not going to talk spoilers about, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I get it. That that sounds interesting. So, and I, I am an advocate that more visual novels need to make more like story important bad ends. But I feel like they don't oh, do that same. anymore. Oh, no. I, it's like, it's I, I'm a pretty serious sure talked, problem. I'm pretty sure I've talked about this with you <laughs> due to some things that I'm working on, but I right. think bad ends need to have... They, they have to ha give you incentive to get the good end. They shouldn't just be like, oh, you made a wrong mistake, bye, just try it again next time. No, they need to like right. have some gravitas and importance, and when you get them, you need to feel like, okay, I see where the issues I made were. Now how am I going to fix them? That's how I feel like bad ends should be. Right, and it's something that you can't achieve in other mediums quite yes, as well exactly. as you can in visual novels, which yeah, is why a, these are so... It's such a good medium. Yeah, it's a non-linear medium, and it's one choice based by the person. So you want to make your reader make those right choices, and you, right. Need, to, you need to like make them figure out what they need to do on themselves. Like Sometimes you there is there are games that go... A little bit overboard, <coughs> Clanet. <coughs> but I think <laughs> if there's a good balance, it's something like Air, where you get the bad end, and it's its own story, but it also teaches you something in itself, and then it pushes the tr the message of the true ending even harder once you have that context in mind. Yeah, I think Air and Little Busters, and to a slightly mm -hmm. lesser extent, First Beat are the three key VNs that do bad ends the best. Ooh, so, yeah, I can agree with that. Like, Even though Lil Buster's bad ends can be paid, I can still agree with that. They do the most for the story, you know? 
And and it like what we were to to bring it back to Minagi. I want to know why getting on the bus is the wrong decision for Minagi when and the visual novel tells me in no uncertain terms that this is wrong for Minagi. And there are plenty of people who will try to argue that her getting on the bus is actually the right decision, and I just do not get it. Like people do? Spiral, what this do you think? This is the first I've heard of that. I disagree with that entirely. Same. Well, I don't think the. I mean, this is not like a... I mean, to take an extreme example, this is not like... If you read something like Haruka's Bad End in Little Busters, you will know immediately why you have made the wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do not think that Minagi's Bad End is like that, because the visual novel will not tell, like show it in your face how you've screwed up or like what it's the bad subtle happened. about it but it but minagi does not get the closure that she does right no i think that anybody who's read it with any fair amount of attention and perceptiveness will understand why this is the bad choice yeah so i don't know uh, that like and i'll admit um, on my first read i was conflicted about whether she should have gotten on that bus. But after my most recent reread, I'm like, no, she needed to have that um, that moment with Michiru. Like, that that's something Minaki needed for her own catharsis, irregardless of what was happening between Minaki and her mom. Mm, yeah, I fully agree with that. Like, it, it's a very simple message to me. It, that a lot of fiction tries to achieve, but at the same time, it's something that a lot of people need to be constantly reminded of because it's it's too easy to do, and that's uh, don't run away from your problems. You, yeah, you, you need exactly. To face, you need to face your demons one day, and, and running away from them isn't going to solve them. Right, and it's a message that Yukito needs to learn going into going into uh, Misuzu route and the true routes. So, exactly. for those people who say that the side heroine routes in Air do not matter, I'm sorry, you are wrong. That is the <laughs> single. That is the single like Air hot take that I think is just objectively stupid. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree with that. Like. I, I don't even I don't even know if like saying is a hot take, but at at the same time it is very common for people to say that the heroine roots are useless. But in my honest opinion, no, they're not. <laughs> they're, they're not. They're really not. They're they're like they've got issues, but I think they're important because like I th and I think the reason people say that is because key VNs following air all have route continuity where every route is canon in some way or another and air doesn't have that but i think in terms of its messages kano and minaki route are both I mean, I'd say that, important I'd to yukito as a character i'd say all key stories do have canonicity like that's just how visual novels work but I don't. I don't think there there needs to be like a direct linking thing between all of them. I mean, route I'm continuity in that they. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I know. I okay. know what you mean. But like at the yeah. same time, I do feel like that that still can somewhat apply to air because it's like I don't know. It's, it's that a visual unified. Novel. It's a visual novel. Yeah, that's just part of the <laughs> like, It's a unified <laughs> message. It's a unified message, and it's a unified story. And. Yes. Yukito wouldn't be the same character without all of them. Kano wouldn't be the same character without all of them. And I think they're all important to some extent, even if they don't contribute completely into the true roots. Like, you can say that for any 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 other type of uh, key work. Like, uh, rewrite, for example. When when does Shizuru do anything in true? Not that much, but uh, she's still a very canon heroine and very important yeah. to the story of rewrite. And you can say that to any any other key character i'm just using an example right so yeah right. i think i think air is not really an outlier it's just i think people it's a ignore, pioneer it's the first of the it's the first of the examples and i feel like yeah. people dog on the character roots because they don't like them like and that's fair enough but at the same time just because you don't like them doesn't mean that they're not important and they're skippable they're simply right. not and yeah. as uh, Utori and I prove there are people that like the character roots of of Air. There are people who like Minagi's root. There are people who like Kano's root. So don't skip them. Right. Like, 
if, you should and never skip roots unless they're um, really bad. And no key root is bad, so. I think what people mean, though, I mean, like, first of all, I think people are saying that those two side roots are not the same level of quality as the like main narrative with Misuzu, Haruko, and Yukito. Um, and they're right, but also what is at that level of quality, because we're talking about like actual masterpiece level writing in those parts. And also, I mean, if you take out Minaki and Kano, you know, like air doesn't stop working, right? Like the, the central narrative is still there. It's very coherent. It, it works perfectly well. I mean, that's basically well, what the, what the movie is. So, I mean, I, I, I <laughs> it's, I'm it's good. More, I'm all for getting more air for your money, but I don't think they're essential. I just think they're not as terrible as people say. I think they are important to understanding Yukito, though. Like, I think without them, his motivations would not be, and his specifically his struggle, would not be anywhere near as strongly shown. Because here's the thing. Mm. Yukito... Yukito comes from a time where arrow gay protagonists are expected to have no personality. You know, like most of them at the time don't even have a face. Even Yuichi in the visual novel does not have a yeah, face. You're actually, you're actually right. Yukito like, you, is Yukito is the opposite. Yeah, he, he is. He is a fully fledged character. So and he's very, very in like incredible one at that i don't know how to describe oh how yeah. do you describe the chaos that is yukito kunisaki because one thing i will say <laughs> for the anime is that as as you can criticize the anime in a lot of ways but one of the biggest critiques i have is uh yukito feels very watered down there in the anime and i'm not saying that like the anime is bad with yukito because i feel like one of my favorite part of yukito's character is how insane he is this dude kicks TVs to, like, get them to work. <laughs> he eats, he drinks milk he finds on the, on the floor, and he eats bones. Oh, this the dude the is best, unhinged. <laughs> my favorite Yukito comedy moment, like, we could take a short little detour to talk about that. It's like on the second or third day, like, you, you can get this choice where, like, Misuzu's cooking dinner or something, and you could just randomly call one of her friends on the phone. Mm -hmm. Like, why is that there? I don't know, but it's I damn well so, chose to do that. <laughs> it's so insane. Yeah. And that's exactly why I love Yukito. He's just so weird. Mm -hmm. And that and and for as you said, a time where visual novel main characters barely had any personalities, that's huge. And I think that was a really good call on Air's Air's part. Because it makes Yukito all the more memorable as a protagonist. Spiral, you've been trying to jump in with some about you. Oh, I'm just going to say on that phone call, um, the, the first night that you go to the Cameo house, and if you don't uh, choose to call on her friends, what instead you can do is you can call the ramen shop, even though Misuzu is in the kitchen making ramen at that moment. <laughs> and he orders ramen for the house, and Misuzu's like, what are you doing? And he's like, let's have a race. We'll just see which one finishes first. Oh, my God. He's so stupid. That's exactly <laughs> he is why really I stupid. Him. He's, like, just such a chaotic energy. And it's so hard to just, like, imagine a character like him until you experience him. It's, it's so funny. It's worth him. noting that if you, if you play Air with the most recent... Um, patches, which most people do these days, Yukito is fully voiced start to finish, which is just adds so, so much to him. I love his voice actor in the vision novel, and I, mm -hmm. I respect the anime version as well, but the, the vision novel version, oh, I, 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 it's probably just because the vision novel has all the best scenes with him. Yeah, like, canon and Clanad, like, you can make arguments for how to best experience the story, but Air, there's no question that the visual novel is the best way to experience this story. Absolutely. So. The anime, however, is, first of all, just absolutely visually stunning. And second of all, I think that they Agreed. do a pretty darn good job keeping the, like, the tone, the themes, the characters, or most of themselves. And I really think that the main issues with it could have been fixed with just adding a few more episodes. 
should, should we talk the save the anime talk uh, after we finish the Misuzu and Summer Root discussion? Because I feel like I want to leave that to the end. Is that sure, scary? I'm I'm good with that. All right. This it, it's not an episode of Key Radio Live if we don't get on some tangents. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like, just gonna happen. So yeah. Anyway, that was a great segue to the Misuzu Road. So let's talk about <laughs> the extended prologue. Um, it was good. <laughs> I still think it's one of the best routes in Key. Like, get I'm mad old. at me for that all you want. Like, I know it's just basically a prologue. I think the themes it brings forward are stunning because here's the thing and it is important i think to read it last for this reason i'm a big proponent of minagi kano misuzu and that is the correct order in my opinion but it's what it's the first time we see yukito struggle and he's losing you know like he struggles with kano and minagi to do the right thing and get on the right track but He's never to a point where he's just losing and about to give up and actually does it, actually decides to leave. Mm hmm Yeah. And that was a big deal for me seeing that the first time. You know, Air was Air was one of my first uh visual novels ever. Uh, the only VNs I had read before it were Little Busters and Kud Wafter. And then I read Air when the translation dropped in 2014 for the first time. And it was it was eye-opening because it's a very different thing than Little Busters. So Oh yeah, definitely. It's from a very <laughs> different era, probably my favorite era of visual novels, like production-wise. I've I've said it before, but around two thousand. The the early two thousand, yeah, the around two thousand is my favorite era of visual novels because I just love this art style. Like the art style that Snow and Air uses. They yeah. nail atmosphere so well. For real. It's just so <laughs> such a good atmosphere. Oh, I love it. I love it. But that's a bit off topic again. But yeah, Misuzu's root. I, I don't know if I dis uh, I disagree with you saying it's one of the best key roots. It's more just like I don't really understand it myself because to me, Misuzu's root is mostly build up, and that's not a bad thing. I just think it's for it's less the root in its on its own that's great for me and more just how much it enhances the summer and air root experiences and that's what makes it great and that's right. probably the common opinion i think so i am so in love with con like their interactions in common and then misuzu's route um i this is a way hotter take than i think when she is but I think it's my favorite heroine route. I'm not counting true routes, but like of any key heroine. Um, I just think there's so much beautiful stuff and I'm not even gonna have a chance to talk about half of it, but. I am I mean, it's definitely like top five for me, so. Yeah, I think the way that they, the way that the two of them interact and play off each other first is just absolutely perfect. Like both of them are, Questing, uh, you know, okay, so Air, in general, okay, there's a, there's a German poet who wrote a poem about um, a, a young man who sees a blue flower in a dream, and he spends the rest of his life kind of obsessed with it and wanting to find this blue flower to see it in real life. And I think huh. that sort of metaphor works really well, not just for Yukito, where you can see he's looking for the girl in the sky, but also for... Um, Misuzu and even Haruko, in their way, are all sort of yearning for something. And when they first meet each other, I don't think they have the... I don't think that they understand how to communicate with each other. They think that they're all on very different pages. And for me, the common route of air is these three people learning to understand that they may all actually be questing for the same thing. Mm. Yeah, I can definitely, yeah. I can definitely agree with that, because it's basically the meeting I love of these that. two individuals from fate like it as like a fated meeting and that encounter is very special and i do agree that it is something that leaves an impact in your reading i mean all 
I'll tell you this, like reading air, like very, very early in my key journey, probably earlier than most. Most people start with clan ad or angel beats. I started with little busters and then went to air, which was pretty niche at the time, you know, because this was when the translation first dropped. I, I started reading it on the day the English translation dropped. And when the, the first thing I noticed is that this visual novel gives a lot more um, flair to heroine introductions, especially Misuzu. Like, when you first meet her, like, Yukito thinks she's flying and, like, coming down mm. onto the embankment, and I'm like, Little Busters yes. doesn't do anything like this, but it's making a big deal out of it. And then yes. the next thing that happens is he sees her feet on the ground, and he's like, oh, I don't give a shit anymore. And yes! Oh my god! I, was, I, I did not mention this, but yes, I love like Misuzu's introduction scene so so much it is so one of good. the best introduction scenes like just the i i have said it many times before but natsukage is one of my favorite osds and key that's the scene that made it it's up amazing. That I, yeah. I i i saw that i saw misuzu like that image of misuzu just standing there and that awful like not not awful as an awful like awful that awful Mm -hmm. Just sight. Yeah, Welcome, I was in, Lisa. I was in awe, and I saw Misuzu, and that theme was playing, and just Yukito describing her, her appearance, and that was a, like a magical experience for me. I was like, Keith, and I was like, I don't know how they did it. It was just a girl standing there, and it was and just they managed the to make it special. At, like... They managed to make it so special and leave an impact on me. Like even now. I feel like that scene has such a big impact. I don't know how. I just, I, I, I think it's magical and really, really good. And I love that scene so much. Right. It's, it's, in general. Oh, go ahead. No, you first. Well, I was, I was gonna say, Misuzu in general is uh, really like just has this sense of being alive. Like she's gonna walk off your screen, and. I think there are a few things that do that. Um, like, for one thing is that it'd be easy to just kind of, like, characterize her as this really simple Moe character, but she also shows that there's a lot more to her than that. She She's, she gives off the impression of that at first, and I think that's really great, because the thing is, you you look at Misuzu, and on first impression, you just feel like, oh, she's just another Ayu, or oh, she's just another Nagisa. But then you read more, and it's like, the more you learn about her, the more you, you pick up on her, you begin to unravel her layers, and it's just, it's an experience. As much of an IU simp as I have been lately, Misuzu is much deeper. She is so good. Like... And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not throwing shade at the other, other heroines, by the way. I love them all. But in my opinion, I've said this before, but out of... Uh, the season trilogy main heroines, Misuzu is by far my favorite. Mine, like, she is mine S tier. As well. She is yeah, S tier like, for me. She is such a spots. strong and special character. She is really strong. I mean, one thing that you don't immediately notice, but you can pick up on, is that she's not naturally outgoing. She keeps on coming up to Yukito, but that is not in her nature to be this super charismatic extrovert um she is doing it through force of will and that's i'm not going to say much more about that because it kind of gets into air route but i'll, I'll just her hardest. quick aside it is my fav the scene you're talking about in air route is my favorite scene in the visual novel it's I a was, really good scene it, it's yeah. just july yeah. 17th of air route like the yeah. the day before yeah. common route starts is my favorite yeah. scene in the visual novel so good. It's so good. The other thing is that she has a layer of sort of secrecy to her. Like she picks up on stuff about, for example, Haruko. Um, she does some play acting at different points. She has this sort of secret inner life that you don't always expect from a Moe character. It's it's this is what makes Misuzu like amazing to me, is that when you read the common route, you read that through Yukito's perspective, and you see Misuzu through his perspective. And you see that surface level stuff like Yukito does. Like she's just a really dumb girl. She's a bit weird. She follows you. Oh, she's kind of annoying. She's very moe. That's what you see at the first time. But I when think you it was deliberate. It, 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 I definitely think it's deliberate. I definitely think it's deliberate. And it's that exact thing that makes it so amazing when you get to the air route 
And when you switch the perspective to Misuzu, you see those exact same scenes, but with Misuzu's internal monologue, everything changes. You realize well, it's, just it's how not her internal big monologue, it is. though. Like I, it's her I perspective. Don't, it's her not perspective. Not even. Not even. You know? We just. She just is able to talk more freely with the protagonist of Air Route than she is with Yukito because Yukito is a person. Mm. So, which right. is one of my favorite things about that character, about, about, I could say his name, about Sora, you know, because Sora being a, a bird is privy to more information than a human because... He can't talk back to you, you know, like uh -huh. I talk to my pet more freely than I talk to my mother. Yeah, because that, it's the no judgment. Change. It's the perspective change. And right. Like that, that for me is something that truly amazes me to see the exact same scene, but with a bit more context that everything changes. That is, yeah. that is a mark of true, excellent writing. Oh, I am. Mm. Yes, it's so good. It's really good. You know what makes Misusu so sad? Yeah. Oh boy, I'm ready. Lay it's... it on me, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I cry for Misusu because she isn't crying for herself. Like, what yep. makes it, like, she's so strong and she doesn't understand how bad she has it in life. Like, she's always saying stuff like, it's okay not having friends because I have fun you know, playing with bugs and trying weird juices. And well, she's the only <laughs> one on the planet who doesn't understand how heartbreaking that is. Uh, 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 I love her. She's so yeah. precious. I want to give her a hug. <laughs> it's, yeah, I I second literally all of that. It's And it's it's that build up and just like that sad thing of like, you, you see in the end of the road, you get to leaving her. It's just... It's heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. It's it's why I think it's it's important. It's why I think the other routes are important, weirdly yes. enough, because the contrast is is kind of necessary here. You know, Yukito has proven himself by this point, if you read the routes in order, has proven himself by this point to be clearly able to go above and beyond for the people he meets and cares about. And the fact that this is what breaks him clearly shows how much Misuzu is going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, it's so good. Yeah. So, but yeah, the route ends on a cliffhanger, and then we go to what is, if you're not spoiled by it, like, and Spiral, I want to hear about your experience too, because mm -hmm. I bet it was similar to mine, because you were a VN first person. Uh, I knew that it was going to go back in time. I didn't know. I didn't. Oh, okay. I had That's zero you clue. Might, you mind if I say you, one more thing about the end of Misuzu Rat, though? Oh, yeah, sure. yeah. Go for it. I just want to point out that the very end when Yukito is performing for the children and like makes a real conscious effort to listen to them and change his act and improve himself, that is the single best use of music in all of Key. Because Natsukage is playing there, although Misuzu is not Misuzu on the Misuzu is not there. Yep. I love that. Ah, oh, that's such a good thing. I love, I love it. I love it. Just to have Misuzu's theme in the background, well, even... Because you know that scene is for her. Well, yeah, she's on, she's on his mind. It's so smart. I love it. <laughs> and it's weird because here's the thing. One and Canon, or eh, one was all right, but Canon especially had some god-awful sound direction. Not and sound, air, by the way, sound direction. Yeah, yeah. The, the tracks themselves are beautiful in Canon. Yeah, they just are, not utilized the best. So many times where there was a scene playing and the music is just the wrong music. Air never fucks that up. It is perfection start to finish. Uh, summer route. I did, when I clicked summer, like I knew there were true routes like refrain. I didn't know there were going to be two, but I was not expecting to actually go 1000 years into the past. 
like I think the theory I was working with at the time was that like because again coming off of Little Busters, so I had this as context um, for Key, but I was I had the theory at the time that none of the girls were actually real, and Yukito was kind of you know dying of heat stroke basically. That what? was the theory I was running with at the time, which <laughs> it sounds really stupid now. But, <laughs> but then going a thousand years into the past, I was like completely floored by what by what I was seeing. It was it was really, really cool. So. Uh, also, yeah, Summer Route is really good. It's really good. It's also really pretty seeing the different costumes. Um, I've said this before, but I would kill for like a full length key VN that is set in historical Japan so that I get to see oh, yeah. more people wearing stuff like that. And the music is also, we hear like a bunch of tracks that we haven't heard up to this point. And New they tracks! Are all fantastic. They're so yeah. good. Like They're all good. I, I love, okay, okay. How do we even begin talking about the summer? Because I feel like there's so many things we can talk about the summer route that just hone in on the experience that this well, is yeah, like it's a different it's a major thing. tone shift. New, it is a major shift. New new tracks and also the lighting is just darker. The again. lighting is different. The text box is different. Everything right, is yeah. different. Like they basically hone in on the summer route being its own special experience and I think it's great. Yeah. Like the fact that the text box goes from the basic basic blue text box to to a gold like, one to a fancy gold one like reminiscent of uh what you call it like something from the medieval times i don't know if, if that's the right word but like it's an older thing and you yeah. can feel it and i think that is <laughs> the impact that alone i gotta read this so saito says hyper realistic chicken is different <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> that cg is so amazing uh, it, it, it is a ridiculous looking CG. Like, I'm sorry, I don't like the chicken. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> Kana is cute. I funny. hate the chicken. I think oh, it's like... funny. I unironically love it. I think it's funny. Like, I don't It know. is funny. It's very funny. But I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. All right. So now we get to summer, which is the flashback arc. <clears throat> yeah. And here we meet an entirely new cast of characters, which, uh, let me just say, it's absolutely amazing how air manages to essentially give you two entire cast of characters so like just straight up and the summer su the summer cast only appear in summer they only right. appear in summer all of their development and empathy like all the scenes that make you attach to them all in summer all in one route and i don't know how they did it but they made them all likable like by the end they they, they made, made them, them so all... likable enough to the point where everything hits at the end it hits. It hits hard. Right. And not just likable, but developed. You know? Yes. Summer is it. not a particularly long route. You know? It's yeah. it's like, what, 5,000 lines? It's longer than Planetarian, but not by very much. And, but, and it, it, it's right. similar to Planetarian. It achieves that amazing nature of... Doing everything in such a short time, but doing it so well despite that. Right. And there are two things I want to mention about the summer route right, about this is that, of course, because the summer route was written by Suzumoto Yuichi, who wrote Planetarian, he's very good at rural settings, for one. He yeah. also did Snow with the Wadadumono, so he's really good at that. And with Planetarian, he proves he's really good at making likable characters in like an hour. And the second is yeah. that this is the. This is the part that the anime absolutely butchered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, this, is, this is the reason most, you read the visual novel. <laughs> what most anime onlys will tell you, and you two can tell me what you think of this, is that Summer Route in just the main anime is not particularly good, but the OVAs, Air and Summer, kind of save it a little bit. But the thing is, there's no real good place to put them because Air and Summer happens in the middle of Episode 8. Like, it's like the first half of Episode 8, Air and Summer 1, Air and Summer 2, the second half of Episode 8, and then Episode 9 make yeah. a complete Summer arc. 
Exactly, and that's the problem. <laughs> right, it's because there's no way you can watch it properly. Because uh... <laughs> you'd have I... to stop in the middle of the episode. Yeah, exactly. And I, I recommended. Uh... So my friend Lee, and he's watched the air anime. When I recommended him to watch the air anime, uh, I. Mm-hmm. recommended it after the first episode of summer so basically they had already finished their that's adventure when and i tend to recommend it as well yeah but at the same time at that point you go back in time so it feels like you're retreading ground that you've already been through yeah but at the same time how else are you gonna do it so i still th- i agree with you though <clears throat> i think it's the best place to put them is between episodes eight and nine and even still i don't particularly perfect. think it does a great job at uh giving it does well enough with kana but ryuya and urha definitely feel weaker in the anime than they do in the visual novel yeah uh it's such a shame (laughs) a little weird because in theory uh being kinetic and completely linear it should have been the easiest part to adapt it should have been but the 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 reason it was rushed the, yeah, as I, as I was getting to, the yeah. reason it had trouble is because Air's entire... Arrow had to be 12 episodes. I don't know why they decided to fit an entire like, full-length visual novel in 12 episodes, but it was never going to happen. Because the thing is, with every single route, they had stuff cut out of it. With Kano's route, they cut out all the slice of life. I think the Kano's they... route adaptation is just straight up bad. I'm just going to say it. Like, I it's think really it's bad, bad in the anime. They, they cut out all of the slice of life, so you literally don't know anything about Kano. You don't care about her. You, yeah. And by the time you finish the Kano route in the anime, you wonder why she's on the title screen. <laughs> like, you, you wonder why is she the focus. Kinda, and with Minagi's yeah. route, uh, they basically just cut out all the, all the padding which a lot of people complain about I pers- that I didn't mind. But yeah, they cut out the sides, the endings and stuff. But Summer, how do you cut out something that's like... How do you cut something that's important from the beginning to end? You don't. And that's the issue they had. <laughs> yeah. I think, because here's the thing, and like this is going to piss some people off, but I think you two will both be fine with it. Canon 2 adapted a similar length visual novel into into one core just fine. I agree. <laughs> like, I think Canon 2 is still a better written and better paced anime than the Kiyowani Air anime. Oh, and I, I agree. like the Kiyowani Air anime. I oh. think it's good. I just don't think it does the visual novel justice. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Because, like, the... Kill any anime splits me in two because on one hand it is gorgeous, it looks so beautiful. But on the other hand, especially after I rewatched it after reading the visual novel, I'm just like, man, this doesn't hold up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this doesn't compare. So yeah. I don't know if I can say I like it because when I watch it, I'm just like, oh, it could have been so good, but it's not. That's the right. main feeling I get. Uh, so I don't know if Leeson, I can say I like it, but Leeson what I can. Says, yeah. Sorry, this yeah. is. I, I do want to make sure to say this leeson says why does uh the summer ova why was it released after the fact it doesn't make sense uh backlash they got a lot of backlash from the key community about that and it's also Deserves partly <laughs> it, yeah but also partly why kiyowani is at at least at the time and still today very well known for listening to their fans yeah. Um. With every, it, with the exception of Haruhi, but <laughs> shout outs to Haruhi. <laughs> um. But but which is why they made an effort to make their canon adaptation two cores instead of one. And that was a good decision. But very good decision. Yeah. yeah. And what I was about to say, sorry, uh, was no, it's fine. Before is I really interrupted. Fu- yeah. Is that I fully <laughs> agreed that I think. Count on 2002 is a better adaptation of Kanon than Air's Kyoani's Air anime is of Air. Yeah. And I will f- and I will straight up fully say as of this point there is no definitive Air anime. Like there is no you if you're going to read Air if you're going to experience Air you must read the visual novel. There yeah. is no two ways about it. You have right. to read the visual novel. You cannot re- like substitute it. There is no substitute. <laughs> so yeah. 
Right, we've kind of segued into the air, um, into the air anime stuff. Spiral, what do you think of the air anime? As a I whole? actually like it more than most people, but I think that may just be because I like the source material so much. Uh, like, I like, for example, I like the story, like the overall arching plot of air a lot more than the plot of canon. So if I'm just watching one, right. I'd probably rather watch the air anime. As I mean, it just needed more episodes. That's really... Or, I mean, more animes should borrow from what Clannad uh, did, which is just, you don't, have to, you don't have to adapt all the arcs. You can cut stuff and do a few things better, rather than everything not as well. And I think, I think Clannad did a much people. better job with cutting than Air did. The thing is, though, that Clannad's... You, you say that, but the issue is Clannad, uh, when they cut stuff out, is because Clannad has a lot of less Gosh. necessary roots. Yeah. Like, a total of one-third of the roots in Clannad were cut, and, like, the story function's fine. And I think that's not saying the roots are bad, it's just they're very optional, and they feel optional. Right. Yeah. I just think the air enemy didn't need that much more to make a big difference. Like, if you pace Kano's arc in, like, two episodes instead of one, or, like, Minagi's gets three episodes instead of two, like, you're solving, like... A ton of pacing problems just by that I, simple level alone. I just straight up think Air needed to be 24 episodes. Like that, I think even weird. one and a half cores could have done it. And I don't know if half yeah, cores it, it, were really a thing at the time. It, they but... weren't. That's the thing. They, they okay. probably weren't. So it was either 12 or 24. And while, while 24 might have been stretching it, is that it was definitely better. It would definitely be better than 12. And you could right. stretch Air to 12. And I think they were you know, still trying to figure out how to really do a key, a key visual novel anime adaptation. Because, like, the first, like, universally praised one was Canon 06. Yeah. So, like, Canon 02... Canon 02 had its fans. There were people who didn't like that the... Um, that the soundtrack was changed, even though I think they low-key made it better. Um... <laughs> You know, there, you, I fully I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, there there were people who didn't like the art style of it, which I kind of get. I but... understand that, but at the same time, it's it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It, it, but it wasn't universally praised, you know what I mean? So I think, you know, Kiyoani, and Kiyoani was new at the time. Air was only their second anime. They only had Full Metal Panic under their belt. So they were still kind of figuring figuring themselves out. I think yeah. Air could use a new one, like I I think it could like just a like just a a remake. I would love it, but would it? Would it? <laughs> what do you mean? Would, would it, it get happen? One? Yeah, and I'm just like, well, they didn't do it for the 20th anniversary, so <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, we have a capable voice actress for Misuzu, thanks to Kaginato. Yes, we do. Like and uh, she's freaking fantastic. She is really good. Yeah, I, I, I do want an air remake. That would I that know. would be really nice. Mm -hmm. I, and actually, I I I'd hate I don't want to be that guy, but I, I feel like I want to dial back the conversation back to Summer Root because I did. Go for we, it. I just I just realized we didn't talk about the characters at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we, let's we before didn't care about the characters at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should do that. Um, so, uh, our newest protagonist, Ryuya, who we only see for this route, has as much character to him as Yukito. He's great. Like, mm -hmm. he, he has the longest name in, like, he has the, the most complex name in all of Key, for, for those who don't <laughs> know. Like, he's just called Ryuya, but his full name is goddamn un impossible to remember. I'm and not going to try and pronounce it. You're not going to try and pronounce it. Like, he says it once in, once or twice in the, in the visual novel. And I was, like, when he's pledging, like, when he's pledging stuff to Kana, because that's just, like, yeah. polite etiquette. But right. you, you okay. see that full name. And uh, God on Earth, if you're one of the people who are reading in Japanese and you're reading his full name, Lord help you, because, <laughs> oh my god, not, not, it is not even just hard to pronounce, but his name uses, like, the most old-fashioned, complex kanji that's never used anymore. It's, it's basically, like, you need to decipher it. That's how yeah. bad it is. <laughs> if it were, if not for Summer Route, Air would be the, uh, like, 
some people say um like ask i get i hear this question a lot and and utori does too if you're learning japanese and you want to read a key vn in japanese what's the best one to start with and the answer to that question is i mean now it's loopers but before it would have been clanad um it could have been air if not for summer route summer route is the most complex like yeah because, like, is... canon, you have Hisaya, and Hisaya is not, is not easy to read. And then, don't even get me started on Romeo in um, Rewrite. And then in Little Busters, you have Tonokawa, who can be kind of tricky if you don't know what you're doing. So, And the thing about Summer Root is that it, because it's set in the past, it uses a lot of dated, dated uh, Japanese. Right. It's not used anymore, mm -hmm. just to, like, give you an idea of the era it's in and it, it's that that makes it very hard for even native speakers to read it properly it's like, effective though yeah it's like very it's... effective yeah in setting the atmosphere and world right and yeah i think because i did not know that it was written so differently i mean obviously if you're reading a translation you're not going to see any yeah you're not going to see it in english but... well you you can which translation did you guys read uh, Which is the non-British? Was that Winter? Con no, Gao Gao is the non-British. I don't one. remember. Gao Gao is the American translation, and that I think it is the weaker of the two, personally, because it is it is more accurate, but it is less flavorful. Winter Confetti adds some things to it, and a lot of people don't like that because they say it makes summer. It's like artificially adding old English to summer route to make it feel historic. Um, and a lot of people don't like that. I prefer it. I can get that. So, um, but yeah, uh, that's one thing to note about air. You have two options for translation. You have winter confetti, which is a ground up translation, basically. Um, and it, it's known for being the more flavorful of the two and takes more liberties. And you also have gal gal, which is kind of a hobbled together, um version of all of the dropped fans translation projects and finished and that one's in american english and is more accurate to what's actually being said so yeah. it's really take your pick i'm thankful i got a chance to read it in english at all but i will say that gao gao has uh, a lot of typos and i wanted to like i wish i had an easy way to go back and like fix <laughs> <the> different. <laughs> yeah hmm. yeah understandable Anyway, back to Ryuya. I, I do think Ryuya is a very impressive character, and he, he has a really good arc. I, I feel like Lucy, Lucy is going to want us to talk more about it, because I, if I recall correctly, you, you really like Ryuya, unless I'm misremembering. I love his hair. Yeah, you love his hair. Okay. I really love his hair. <laughs> no, he but I, really I nice do hair. like his character a lot, too. <laughs> Just... Yeah. I, I, I love see in the is it just in just in cgs he doesn't get a sprite how many even cgs do we have of him i think just no, one i think we just the one yeah. at the very end yeah but yeah ryuya has that character of is how 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 much can we spoil can we just spoil everything about the summer uh route? summer route uh i don't want to spoil exactly how it connects to air route okay so every to... everything else I think is fair game. Okay. Uh, we so we are... can spoil how it connects back to Yukito. Are we allowed I... to say what happens to Kana? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The loss, man. That feeling of yeah. lo losing someone destroyed me. Like, and just seeing his like Ryuya's Welcome feelings <laughs> upon meeting this girl. And then losing her right in front of his eyes, that was heartbreaking. That was yep. absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, I, that... I cried a lot in Summer <laughs> Route. And, like, it's weird because it's definitely the most action-heavy route of the visual novel, you know? Like, and, and it's kind yeah. of the only action-heavy part of Air. Air is a very lazy story, you know, not in terms of, like, writing or anything, but just the vibe of it. It's hot. No one want, really wants to 
do anything, you know? It's not like canon where it's talking about the coziness of the season. The seasonal atmosphere is totally different. It's about the harshness of summer, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, or summer yeah. pockets would be a better contrast because that's about, like, the fun coziness of summer. And yeah. air is not like that. Air is probably yeah. more like snow, but for summer. Mm. I don't, I don't know, because snow is like a balance of the two. Like it has the okay. happy memories and also the harsh winter. Yeah, it depends on it depends on the day, because like uh, snow okay. literally goes from like every like everything is pretty outside and the snow is very very fun and you can play with your friends and then the next day it's an actual storm and you're you're looking for stuff. But that's that's too much into a visual level no one's right <laughs> yet. But yeah, I I haven't read it myself yet, but I I will be soon. <laughs> you will soon. It's, yeah, it's almost done. But yeah, uh, yeah, summer root is pain. It is really pain, and a good portion of that pain is thanks to the main the main the heroine of the summer root, Kama, who I initially actually didn't like very much at first. I thought she was kind of annoying. Oh she's, boy, she's a sundere. You know, she's a sundere. Like, she's a sundere, I'm, but she's I don't like. She's almost like a pre Fuko. Kinda. She's Fuko, but less I can kinda that. see that, I guess. She's smarter though. Like Fuko's dumb as a rock. <laughs> yeah, like, definitely. She's less moe than Fuko, but more I, I don't know. She's she's she tries to look dignified, but she's you know who kind she of reminds not. me of? She's a better written Nanase from one. I can see that. She, she's more yeah. that type of Sundre. But but she's that. but Kana's better. <laughs> I mean, so. yeah, absolutely. I fully agree. I, I was thinking if she's the kind of Kana is the kind of character who can't ever stand to be wrong. Um she has to have the last word. She has to like she can't accept that she didn't get the beanbag trick right. Yeah. <laughs> She's funny and yeah. really charming. And the thing is, I initially wasn't a huge fan of her. I, thought, I found she was annoying, but yeah, as I said bef like just now, she, she's very She grows charming. on you. She grows on you hard, and uh, that final moment where she just leaves the gang up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's such a good scene. Like, uh, it's such a, be such a beautiful mu such beautiful music, too. God, I for love real. that track. Uh, speaking of tracks... My favorite track in air is one called Silver, which you only hear at the very, very end of Summer Route. And it only plays once, and it's... Mm. it's I normally good. don't love tracks like that that you only get to hear once, besides insert songs, of course. It really, really works here. It's so good. And speaking of the ending of the Summer Route, uh, I want to talk about the final trio member. Uraha, who I feel is a very underrated character, not in key. Like, no, if I'd say underrated, I feel she's underrated. I don't. I see think it very she's much. overlooked. I, I think I, he, I, most I, people I, agree that she's pretty cool. She's just forgettable. Like, I, I feel like the, they're they go hand in hand. I don't know if like those two do. words go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because no one talks about her. And I might right. be a bit guilty of this myself because I'm such an Akiko sin. But <laughs> everyone talks about Akiko and Sanai when it comes to key mills. Where is the talk with Uraha? No one speaks about her. And I feel like that's an injustice because <laughs> she's such a sweetie. And I adore her. I she's, feel like, she's also kind of a perv, though. Like, she's, the first... she is mom, and I love her. <laughs> She's no, a bit curvy, don't forget but that's what the, makes her good. The first night, like when when they're sneaking out of the when they're sneaking out of the temple, yeah. <laughs> like they're that they're having this secret meeting and like <laughs> they're, how they're do they how do they figure out to um throw the guards off the trail? They just pretend they're, they're fucking. It's amazing. <laughs> <That's> so funny. <laughs> like, uh, well, and she also, and specifically, she implies that uh, he can't perform. So <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's real. I think Uraha is also one of the funniest characters in Air. Oh, because yeah. like she has the she has some of the like the most hilarious interaction with Kana. She's like she's always babying Kana and sticking up with her and pretending to cry. Oh, it's so cute. It's adorable. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, oh, I think start. Uraha is very underappreciated, and that mom, the the mo- like that mom, the moment where at the end she she basically gives her all to Kana, and the la- the moment where she stops Ryuya from going on a murderous rampage in Kana's name, where she literally holds his sword in her hand. That was that was such a moving scene. She's like, oh so God. strong. I love. I just like I tore that scene so much. Yeah, because you can feel like in her, in, like in her heart, that she is hurting just as much as Ryuya. She's holding though, like her his sword in in her hands, and she probably wants to like slaughter everyone as much as he does, but she's yeah. telling him to stop. Because she knows that that's not do what Kana wants. Do we have a CG She's of mourning. that scene? I can't remember. We do. We do get the CG of that scene. Okay. She, she, it's literally her holding Ryuya's sword. And yeah. she's crying of like tears by the time he, when he stops. Like She's smiling, but you can see that she's crying. And she's mourning just as hard. And I was just like... Right, oh, I remember now. You that Kiko scene says, well, her hand so is bleeding hard. from the blade. That that CG hit so hard, and that was the moment where I was like, "Oh my god, I love her! I I adore her! I just want to give her a hug." Man. Yeah, she's oh, so good. <laughs> and this and this is why I never yeah. tolerate. This is why I always feel the need to remind people that Uraha exists and Uraha is amazing. And I and I love Sanaya and Akiko. I and I am one of I am a very big Akiko sim. But oh my god, Team we Sanai. need to talk. We need to talk <laughs> more about Uraha. Like, if I have to be the Uraha fanboy, I will because that she is a wonderful woman, and we meet, need more people to hug her. Yes. <laughs> and with that, I think we're done with the summer route for real this time. And any more finishing thoughts we have? I wanna, I wanna mention one other thing. Is that um, cause like this we can. We can talk about without getting too deep into um, the territory I don't want to get into, but it the interesting thing about Summer Route is that throughout this whole time, I remember this from my first read. I'm like, how the fuck does this relate? Like, I thought we were just it was another weird thing with the Kano route. Like, oh, now we get a full route. I like these characters, but what's happening? And then they talk about hojutsu, which as we danced around a little bit before is how Yukito is able to move his puppet. And then it just instantly clicked. As soon as they said that word, I mean, instantly clicked what's happening. They were in the common road. Yukito was talking about a girl in the sky and Kana disappeared in the sky. So I was just like, oh, that's the girl in the sky. I don't know why I didn't put that together. I, I mean, I got no words for that, but fair yeah. enough. <laughs> but oh, yeah, that was Yukito, for me. I cannot remember what it was. Yukito says I had a whole theory um, I presented on Hojutsu mechanics. And I, I remember liking it, but I don't remember what it was. It was a long time ago. It's magic. It's, well, yeah. I, I think... Hold up. Let me, let me find it. You too. Talk for a second. <laughs> All right, well, here's, so here's far I mean, one of the we haven't really said this yet, but one thing that Air is certainly is about is it's about family, and specifically, it's about uh, mothers, but it's also about like created family. And none of the none of the heroines that we see in the dream section have traditional family structures. All of them are people who have been thrown together together by weird circumstances, whether it's like the sisters in the uh, Kirishima route, um, whether it is uh, the, I mean, we didn't even talk about Minagi's mother, but we could have gone there. Um, yeah. And then of course the central trio of Haruko, Yukito, and Misuzu. And in summer might be the best example of this as all because you have these three people who are all basically lacking families of themselves and throughout the course of this pretty short route become a really convincing picture of one in yeah. deed, if not in fact. Yeah. I fully agree with that, because one thing I will say is Clanad focuses a lot on the theme of everyone is a family. And like and it focuses on the theme of family in terms of not just blood, but like how everyone in the community is a family. I feel like Air is a story about how cl- like the personal feeling of family. 
a family mm -hmm. from two individuals or three like those people that you care about and and truly love that's what Here's... i think air's theme of family is about and it's something yeah. i really love Here's how I describe it. Clanad is about the family you choose, and Air is about the family who chooses you. And those are different. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree with that. It's so good. It's, All right, I'm going to read what Yukito said, because this is an interesting thing, little, mm. little thing to mention. Uh, he says, do you think it's possible that in the climax of Minagi's route after Michiru went poof without them realizing it, Yukito subconsciously used Hojutsu to locate her at the school rooftop because Uruha had a similar use of her ho Hojutsu at one point where she guides the gang across the sacred mountain. Oh, interesting. And I remember really liking that. That's a really cool idea. <laughs> it's some food for thought that Yukito may have some. They never really explain what Hojutsu is, is outside of its magic.png. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> um, I had a theory that it's basically airbending mm. for a while, since it can be used to move objects, but that doesn't explain everything about it. So. Mm. Yeah, I can understand. But that. like for like Kano's feather. For example, like we know crazy shit happens when the winged people fly. So Yukito is kind of emulating that with his hujutsu on the feather. Mm. So, but that's what ties it back to the dream arc. But then after that, you get the air arc, which we're not going to talk about today. So mm -hmm. if you want to un really get that and really know what's so special about it, read the visual novel, because we talked a little bit about Sora, um, and I guess we could talk a little bit about Sora, at least. The moment, the first hour or so of Air Route, I think is one of the most well-written things in fiction. Absolutely. Because, mind it's mind-blowing. Yeah. Knowing, like, even just the first few minutes of not knowing who you are and then getting that information from that CG when Misuzu picks Sora up and puts him on her shoulder. And then you get the title card there that just says Air, and it's like, oh, now we get the title card? It's, it's like, oh, this is where the story truly starts. So... Let that be, and, and this is one part the anime really does not do it justice. So if you're listening to this as an anime only, let this be a call that read this thing. It is not insanely long. It's maybe 25 to 30 hours. It is 110% worth your time. It is yes. the best thing to come out of early key, I think. Mm, I don't know if I'd say the best thing, but I'd say it's one of them. Well, uh, that, that's not a lot of competition because there's a lot of great things from early key, but... I, Air, Air it, is a very I'd special put it, story. I'd put it above Clanad. I'd put it above Canon. I probably I put it above Moon and One. I can respect that. Yeah. I can definitely I, respect that's, that. What, that's just me, but... that That's the thing with Key for me, is that a lot of people can say... Oh, I like this work more than this, and I like this work more than something. I disagree with your ranking, but I wouldn't. It's all, for work, yeah. It's all really good. It's but all good. Thing, yeah, when <laughs> he is good. Say, Air Spoiler is like, alert. To me, one of the biggest <laughs> examples. Like, I don't rate it as like as the highest for me personally. Right. It is like out like the fifth or sixth favorite on my personal list. But if people will say it's their absolute top favorite, they like it more than Little Busters, they like it more than Planetarian, Planad, I won't judge them. I completely understand why. Yeah. It is that kind of working. It's like, yeah, I might not love it as much as you do, but I understand fully why you love it more. Yeah. It is very special, and it's a great piece. For me, the holy trinity of key, from what I've read so far, is um, two works that come up a lot. Um, Clonad and Little Busters, but the third of that trinity is Air. And I think one thing that sets Air apart is that it seems like the plot 
and the idea of the curse and the girl in the sky is something that like nobody would come up with unless you were completely inspired. Like I see it as almost a work of genius. Like Jun Maida actually saw a girl in the sky. Because I, you know, like one of us, somebody in the server could have thought of like the main plot ideas of Clanad, say. Like now, yeah, the execution is another matter. But yeah, who could have thought of this? The, can we talk about the curse for a second? It's wild. It's really freaking wild, even by key standards, you know? Yeah, I fully agree. It's a very epic story for a key story. Because most key stories, they tend to be very personal in scale. But air is a like it's a legend. This is a full on this is a full on epic. This isn't right. just like revolving around a couple of people and their normal lives. This is a full on saga of generations. And that that's truly something I really like about air. I think that can we can we talk about the curse? Is that like too spoilery or uh oh. As long, I because like half of, the, half of the curse's like best parts are laid to air root. Yeah, I. But think the curse, it's, but the curse itself, it said what it said about it is it, it like it is mentioned directly in the Misuzu root. But why it's good, I don't know if you can get into it without getting into the air root. Yeah, I think let's leave the curse. Okay, just, okay that's, can I say yeah. something about it? Is just Misuzu root then? Yeah, yeah, Fair go enough. for it. So, the, okay, so the, the basic idea of the curse is that she, Misuzu, cannot get too close to another person, or they oh, will Oh, this both... stuff's all good, yeah. Yeah, okay. Or they will both start to, I, what's the sequence? They're, first their legs start to fail, then they feel, like, what, in, in, intolerable pain, and then they die. Yeah. Um, spoiler. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it's not I, really a spoiler, they say it. They say it, right. Yeah. yeah. So I think one thing that Key is really, really good at is taking sort of like psychological feelings and sensations that we've all had and can ex and can relate to and putting it into sort of like storybook form. And I think that this curse can be seen as a, a metaphor for basically um, fear of commitment. Actually, yeah, that's that's totally correct. It's like we're dedicating yourself to someone. The curse relates to me and I think to a lot of people because it is that kind of fear that we all have of letting somebody too deep into our lives. And this is just like taking that and physicalizing it. Yeah. Which is kind of a thing for Key in general, in a way. Like one, one thing I like to say about Key heroines a lot is that they're basically just caricatures of feelings. <clears throat> you know, of certain feelings. <clears throat> so. Yeah. And certain events and emotions and and all that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. I, I, that's that's pretty accurate. That that's key. <laughs> that's just yeah, that's what they key. do. <laughs> and th this is definitely when that really started to come into their own. Because like it's this is a story that's very much about its morals. I would say. Mm hmm. All right, any closing thoughts? Because this was a long episode. <laughs> it was a long episode. Um, and we never even talked about Haruko. I don't think we could because all of Haruko's best aspects are related to Air Root, so... Yeah. There. Um, she, she's great. There's, a, there's another character who I think is very important to Air, and I actually think is a good character, even though he's a dick that we can't talk about. Um, because yeah. he he, he only appears in air route. He, um, he well, no, he technically appears in the common room. It's just you don't know anything about him, right? The, the, the fact that he has a sprite though is weird, though. Yeah, like it's like you know he's gonna be you, important. Yeah, he's a character that you the moment you see him, you know you want to punch him in the face. But uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he just has that energy. You look at that face, it's like, something yep. about you ticks me off. I don't know why. <laughs> Definitely and then you the get case. to the arrow, just like, oh, that's why you ticked me off. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff. So, anyway, uh, yeah, TLDR, I... read air. It's and also absolutely breathe worth it. your time. Oh. Please breathe air. Thanks, man pig. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you are having trouble figuring out how to get the visual novel working, 
uh, join the Keyverse server, we can absolutely help with that because it is an old VN and the patches are a bit finicky sometimes, but uh, we have ways here. So, <clears throat> Sep. Shout outs to Sep. Sep is one of the most based air fans I've ever met. Huge fan of Misuzu and just a really cool guy. <laughs> and the reason I was able to save any files at all in my game. Yeah. Right, because he's the developer have... of the pasta patch. Yeah, everyone ha everyone has that bug I noticed, the one where you can't save. Yeah. Everyone who reads air has that issue from what I've seen. So Sep basically carries. Yeah. Um yeah. I'll I'll get into that in the post show. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us everyone. Good night. Have a great night. Ow.